Hi, I'm Suresh Venkat. I have with me all the way from Denmark, Helge J. Pedersen, Global Chief Economist for Nordia, and I have the Danish Ambassador to India, Freddy Swain. Gentlemen from Denmark, welcome to India. Thank Are you. you enjoying your, your time in India? Yeah, I've been there for almost three years, so okay. um, really enjoying India. Okay. Uh, it's not a country, it's a nation, so it's offering a lot of things, so okay. it's great to be here. Most yeah. Indian businesses uh, see Europe as the UK, they see it as France, they see it as Germany, they see it as Italy. Yeah. Nobody thinks of Denmark and Norway no. and the Scandinavian countries. Uh, what are you doing to build that reputation for Denmark and India? I, we are very active, we are also very proactive looking into how we can secure that the Indian companies okay. are willing getting to the uh, Nordics. The Nordics okay. are, I mean, altogether will be 20, 25 million in, uh, inhabitants. Okay. We have a quite strong economy and we have a lot of companies. As to Denmark, we have uh, more than 120 companies uh, operating here in India. They are registered here. And we are trying to bring Indian companies. I believe very much in that if we can combine um, the two the psych uh, business communities on both sides, then we okay. can see uh, a lot of good progress. And we're doing that okay. uh, on the business. And then we are from government to government. Of course, we are trying to do whatever we can to facilitate and promote these things. Okay, what is the image for Denmark you'd like Indians to keep in their minds, for Indian businesses in particular? I mean, uh, years back, Denmark was uh, known to the Indians as the land of dairy. Okay. Um, Denmark is a green country, we have smart solutions, but we have also realized Today Denmark is known as the country that gives us windmills and yeah, green yeah, energy. Yeah, with renewable energy. So that's the image that Indians have of Denmark. Green and smart technologies. Okay. And uh, I think there are a lot of uh, opportunities uh, to grow that. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, we look upon India as uh, really not a, an emerging market. It has re-emerged. Okay. And there are a lot of opportunities and uh, the, lots of Danes have come to India over the years. And uh, we really like the Indians to look upon uh, Denmark and the Nordics as part of their growth story okay. as well. On that note, I'm going to come to you, Mr. Pedersen. We've heard about the crisis in Greece, the crisis in mm. Portugal, the crisis in Spain mm. and France. We don't hear of the crisis in the Nordic countries. Mm. Are Nordic countries somewhat insulated from the financial crisis that is sweeping across Europe? No, you can't say that it's insulated because Relatively the Nordic insulated. region is a very open region. Okay. But they have overcome the crisis at a faster speed than, for instance, the South European countries. Okay. And they are very much looking to grow now from the export side. And in that sense, I think that uh, the trade and direct investments with uh, India can be an opportunity okay. in the future for the Nordic region. And if you were to put a reason to why they recovered faster from the crisis, would you say a stronger banking system, better regulation? What are the reasons that you would put for Denmark's uh, recovery? Uh, uh, <coughs> in the case of Denmark, Denmark is a growth laggard because actually Denmark had also had a housing market okay. uh, bubble which bursted in 2007. So Denmark has had more problems to recover than the other countries. Okay. But Norway, for instance, is afloat in oil. So, you know, no matter what happens, and the Norwegian economy, the oil economy fine. keeps it and going. Sweden, they got a kick from a devaluation of the Swedish corner okay. and you know the Swedish economy is following the industrial and manufacturing cycle okay. uh, a lot so they have recovered but the good uh, governance of public finances is one of the major reasons because the Nordic countries need to tighten fiscal policy during the crisis. Actually, the Danish government have tried to kickstart the economy by a okay. more expensive fiscal policy. So this macroeconomic is that prudence, kind of is that kind of kickstart working? Is that kind of economic stimulus working in Denmark? Uh, I, I, it would have been much worse without it. Okay, they say it in that way. But uh, but still, the Danish uh, population, you know, we have a lot of our wealth in our houses and since house market okay. it really hasn't recovered yet and the Danish people are still very reluctant to consume okay. but uh, I would say that uh, the, this governance of, uh, of, of public finances is one of the major reasons that the Nordic countries have been perceived as a kind of safe haven. So, so governance devices. being one of the key yes, platforms. Yes, Ambassador Sven, India gets about 20 to 25 percent of it, the Indian IT industry gets about 20 to 25 percent of its revenue from Europe mm -hmm. and IT CEOs are very worried about the ongoing crisis in Europe. Could they be using Denmark and Nordic countries as a hedge against the crisis in Europe? I think they already have done that. Okay. When we look into uh, how many uh, Indian IT companies and the industry as such that ha has invested in, in the, the Nordics and in Denmark, I have come to the conclusion that the 
competitiveness of the Danish industry could not have been the same without the strong, strong collaboration that has been built up over, over a number of years okay. uh, from the Indian side. So uh, we need India and we have realized that uh, Indian IT is really forming the backbone okay. of uh, very competitive global Danish industries and companies. And apart from uh, the <coughs> the business connections that we have. I'm a fan of television. I've watched this Danish TV show called Borgen. Yeah. And it seems that your political system mirrors the Indian political system. You have uh, <laughs> you have elections as often as we do. Yeah, you have coalitions sure. just as we do. Exactly. Do you see a political bond building between the two countries or some sort of political similarity that could be used to leverage, that could be leveraged for business co partnership? Uh, I'm sure we will see that uh, and I hope that uh, many Indian politicians will uh, uh, view watch. these uh, and watch. So Borgen, uh, the castle yeah. is the show to watch if you're yeah. Exactly. This. So, uh, but you know, uh, politicians all over the world, they have to, to face the challenges. I think what we have in Denmark is second to none in the sense that we have no corruption. Okay. And we have full transparency. That's and not that a sentence you can say in India easily. We have no corruption. We don't know what that means actually. Uh, no, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I spoke about Denmark and uh, that is no really corruption, which is quite an achievement of the Danish, uh, uh, of Denmark and all the Nordic okay. countries. Uh, that we have no corruption. Helge Pedersen, the Indian housing market is all set for a mm. giant boom over the next 20 years mm. and the Swedish furniture maker IKEA mm. is all set to set up shop mm. in India. The Danish uh, design industry has a glorious history similar to many other Nordic countries. Uh, will they be making a beeline for India you think soon with the housing market on the verge of a boom? Yeah, I think so. To be to be honest, I think that the Indian market will be one of the more important for Danish exporters in the future. You should bear in mind that only around one percent of the Danish total trade comes with India. Okay. I mean, and with the potential, with the population growth, the wealth coming in India in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, that will be and the appetite for design and furniture and yeah, that, interiors. Yeah, that, that, that will, that will is, be a huge market. Do you see any roadblocks in this relationship? Any regulatory roadblocks? Any import restrictions? Uh, anything that you see is going to get in the way? Uh, I, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, that, that we will see that free trade really you will be see free adopted trade uh, within the, in the future. The two countries. Okay. I'm going to ask you a last question. Recently, The Economist had a cover with a Viking on it no. saying what other leaders can learn from uh, Danish leadership. Yep. So here's my question. What can world leaders learn from Danish leadership? What's the secret? The secret is that we have a well-balanced system where okay. we take uh, uh, social considerations, okay. but also we try to uh, optimize the uh, gross perspective okay. and, and the conditions. And I think we have this well-balanced system which uh, calls for, let's say, very proactive uh, governance. Okay. And uh, here I think, as the economists rightly put it, we have the next supermodel. So look to the Nordics, look to right. Denmark, and you will find a well-balanced growth. All right. Ambassador Svein and economist Pedersen from Denmark, thank you very much for talking to us. You can catch all our videos on youtube.com slash NASCOMILF2013. Thank you for watching.